let us discuss this theorem. This theorem is so much important because it gives the relation between definition of continuous function with convergent sequence. See in this theorem you can see if and only if condition is there. That means you can consider it as a definition of continuous function. Okay. So let, let us see what have they given here. They have given two matrix spaces xd and yd dash with two matrix spaces. Here we have a function f from x to y. Okay. And there is some point P in the matrix space XT. So we have to prove a function F, this function F is continuous at P if and only if for any sequence Xn converges to P, then its corresponding sequence in Y F of Xn converges to F of P. Okay, this thing we have to prove. See, you know that when we have if and only if thing, we assume one part, we prove second part. After that, conversely, we assume second part and we prove the first part same thing i'm going to do here okay so let us start by assuming one part so let me write that thing assume that assume that see i'm assuming this f defined from x to y is continuous at p this thing i'm assuming okay and one more thing i'm assuming that sequence xn sequence xn this sequence xn converges to p in x okay this sequence section converges to p then what we have to prove we have to prove that sequence f of x n okay converges to f of p in y this thing we have to prove if sequence x n converges to p then it's image sequence f of x n converges to image point of p that is f of p See, you know that definition of convergent sequence. We need to take one epsilon first. So let us take one epsilon. Let epsilon greater than zero be given. Okay. So let us use the given information. What is the given information we have? We have we have two informations, right? So out of that, I will use the first information that is f is continuous at p. So but f is continuous at p. So that's why we can use definition of continuous function. You have already seen in previous lecture, right? In previous video, definition of continuous function. Let us use it. So I can write, therefore, for above epsilon greater than zero, there exists delta greater than zero such that, such that D of xp less than delta implies d dash of f of x f of p less than epsilon i will call it as statement number one i simply use definition of continuous function and i got one okay so see we have two informations out of that i use only one so let us use second information also but there is no more space to write so make a screenshot of it and then we will go further let us use second information now. What is the second information we have? Sequence xn converges to p. So we have xn converges to p. I'm going to use definition of convergent sequence. Okay. So definition of con by definition, what can I write? So therefore, for already one delta we have. So for that value of delta, for above delta greater than zero, there exists n belongs to set of natural number such that such that d of x n p less than delta for all n greater than or equal to capital n this is statement number two so using two given informations we have got two different statements so let us combine them and let us see what can we write so from one and two from 1 and 2. What we get from 1 and 2? See, D of x n p less than delta implies. See, as we have written here, if distance between x n p is less than delta, distance between f of x and f of p is less than epsilon. See, instead of x, we have x n only. This is the only difference, right? So, what can we write from this one? We can write D dash of f of x n comma f of p less than epsilon okay provided that condition should satisfy okay n greater than or equal to capital n see yeah from one and by combining one and two we have got this one so we are more interested in this one so therefore what we get finally d dash of 
f of x n comma f of p less than epsilon for all n greater than or equal to capital n this thing we get okay so oh, we have already you can make a screenshot of it let me remove this part so we have some space to write here this is definition of convergent sequence right this is definition of convergent sequence so what can we write f of x n therefore f of x n sequence f of x n converges to f of p in y so we started with sequence x n converges to p and we proved that sequence f of x n converges to f of p so in this way we proved half part of this theorem okay so we have to prove the converse part now make a screenshot of it then we will go further now conversely we assume that x n converges to p implies f of x n converges to f of p right and what we have to prove we have to prove that f is continuous at p so here we assume exactly opposite to that that means i'm going to assume let it possible f is not continuous at p i will write let if possible f is not continuous at p so if function is not continuous we have to write exactly opposite definition of continuous function you are already familiar with definition of continuous function okay so i am writing exactly opposite definition that means so what we write in definition of continuous function for given epsilon greater than 0 there exists delta greater than 0, zero so and so so i am going to write not continuous at p so therefore there exist epsilon greater than i am calling it as epsilon 0 okay greater than 0 for which for which no delta works okay for which no delta works that means for any value of delta the de definition will not satisfy right so that means therefore for delta is equal to 1 that means if you consider delta is equal to 1 there exists some there exists some x1 belongs to x such that such that what we get d of x1 p less than delta but d dash of f of x1 comma f of p greater than or equal to epsilon not getting so actually in definition of continuity what we get this is less than epsilon right but here we are getting exactly opposite greater than or equal to epsilon not right so see for delta is equal to 1 by 2 if you take delta is equal to 1 by 2 again there will be some point there exist x2 belongs to x such that d of x2 p less than delta less than delta here delta is 1 so we can write 1 here getting here delta is 1 by 2 1 by 2 but but d dash of f of x2 comma f of p greater than or equal to epsilon naught getting if you consider delta is equal to 1 by 3 again we will have some point x3 so in general what can we write so in general in general what can we write uh, d of xnp less than 1 by n okay i am skipping that thing okay that means what i suppose to write for delta is equal to 1 by n there exists xn belongs to x such that i am directly writing that thing but but can you tell me d dash of f of xn comma f of p greater than or equal to epsilon naught so this is less than 1 by n you know that 1 by n converges to 0 so that means this distance converges to 0 so therefore what we get sequence xn converges to p but what it means you, you remember the definition of convergent sequence in definition of convergent sequence we get less than epsilon but here we are getting greater than or equal to epsilon naught so therefore f of xn does not converge to f of p okay does not converge to f of p but this is contradiction to given information what we have assumed xn converges to p f of xn converges to f of p here we are getting exactly opposite xn converges to p but f of xn does not converge to f of f of p so we get a contradiction here why we get contradiction because our assumption is wrong what was our assumption f is not continuous of at p that is wrong so that's why f should be continuous at p so in this way we proved converse part also i'm sure you can complete the last 
two sentences here okay so stop here you can make a screenshot then stop thank you bye bye